Hi, I'm Victor at Vimundo.com and today we're going to create a nice retro design adding a global drop cap to all your posts. We're going to use the Divi theme and some custom CSS. So let's start! All the resources needed can be found in this blog post on Divimundo.com and if you're watching this directly on YouTube, you'll find the link in the description below the video. So let's get started. And the first step is to add a CSS class to our custom body template. So I'll head over to my WordPress dashboard on my Divi website and I'll go to Divi and Theme Builder. And from here, I'll find my post template and the custom body part of it. And if you don't have a post template in the Divi theme builder. That means that you probably are using the default Divi blog template that looks something like this. And uh, there are actually a CSS snippet in the end of the blog post that lets you create a global drop cap for this default template as well. So head over there to find it in the bottom of the post. But I would highly recommend you to create a um, global template for your posts in the theme builder since you can do so much more here. So I'll head into my custom body for my post template. And by the way, you can actually download a free post template with the global drop cap included in the blog post. So I will show you how to do that in the end of this video. But first we will focus on how to do it from scratch. Okay, so in the post template, I will look for my post content module and that's this one that will display the text and the images and the other content that you will put into the post when you publish it in Classic Editor or Gutenberg or even the Divi Builder. So I'll open the cogwheel for the post content and I'll head to the advanced tab and I'll go to CSS ID and classes and I'll add the CSS class dm hyphen drop cap. Okay, so I want to target this first letter in every blog post on my website that uses this template. So that's what we are going for. I'll exit and I will save my changes. Okay, next step is to go to the theme customizer under the Divi tab, because now we are going to add our drop cap CSS. And I'll go to additional CSS, you can close that one. And now I'll head back to the blog post to find the CSS snippet. And there we go. So I'll copy that one and I'll paste it in the additional CSS. Well, before we do that, I can actually go to the news and I'll open a blog post so we can see before and after. So here we have a blog post and you can see that there is no drop cap here. And if I paste the text of the CSS, voila, we have a nice drop cap. So what we have done here is that we will target the class that we just created in the post content module in the template and we added dm hyphen drop cap. So that's what we are targeting. We will target the first letter in that element. And you can see a few settings here, like the font size, 75 pixels. You can change that, of course, if you want to have it bigger or smaller. Float left, you should probably not change because that would look strange. But you can also change the padding if you think um, you want more or less padding, the line height, and also the color, of course. And let's publish. And we can have a look here at the different posts. And we have a third one, starting with an L. So that's how it looks. And now it's inheriting the font that is used in the text here, the body copy of the post. So that's the same font. So the next step, we're going to change this font because I think it has a nice retro feeling if you add a serif font or, or a more classic font that will uh, deviate a little bit from the rest of the font you are using. Let's head back to the blog post and uh, change the drop cap font. And we'll start by the easy way. And that's by using a font that is already processed on the website. And there we have six fonts, uh, the classic ones are Arial, Georgia, Times New Roman, Trebuchet, maybe, and Verdana. So I will use Georgia. That's a nice serif font with a classic look. So I will copy that snippet and I will head back to my additional CSS and I will replace the old snippet with a new one. 
Okay, so now we can see that the font changed and the new thing in this code is actually just this one. The font family is saying it should be Georgia and then we have some backup fonts if the font Georgia can't be read. I'll publish and uh, maybe the O you can't really see the serif part. So let's refresh this one with an A. There you can see the nice serifs and we have the L as well. There we go. So this looks really nice, I think. Maybe you want to change it to another custom font, like any Google font out there. And that's a little bit more tricky, but there's a way to solve that. Or actually, there are two ways that I'm going to show you. So if we scroll down, we're going to try it out with this funky font. It's called Henny Penny. And you could, of course, use any Google font or any other font for that sake. But I will use the Henny Penny font in this example. Okay, so I will start by uh, copying this CSS snippet and I will add it, I will replace the old one and you can see a small change there, but if we go to the blog post with an A, there we go, and I refresh it, but it's not Henny Penny, it's a backup font. So this is actually how the Henny Penny font looks. Why isn't that one displayed? The reason for this is that Divi will only read the fonts that are actually used, used on the post or the page that you are visiting. And this is a really good thing because if it would read thousands of fonts, the page speed would be horrible. How do I make Divi to read this font so I can actually display it in front end? Well, there are two ways. And first I'm going to show you an easy hack. That's the quick way of doing it without code, but it's not maybe the most beautiful way, but it works. So if I head back to my site and I'll exit the theme customizer and I'll head back to the theme builder, I'll go to my posts template and the body template. So now I'm going to trick Divi into thinking that the font Henny Penny is used in this post. So I'll open my post content module. I'll go to the design tab. And now I'll have to find a text style that is not used in this post template. For example, example heading text. I haven't styled the age six, the heading six, and that's rarely used, I would say. So I go to the age six that I will never use in a post and I'll choose the heading font. I will search for Henny and there we have it, Henny Penny. And uh, now I will save the template. So let's refresh this one now after we added the age six with Henny Penny. And there we go, the font is actually red. So I know that this is kind of a hack or a workaround, but I mean, it works and it's easy and you don't have to, to do any coding. But I will also show you the more correct way of doing it with code. If you like to keep it neat and clean, I'll head back to the theme builder and I will remove the H6. So I'll go back there to the heading, heading text and I'll just say that the H6 should have the default font and I'll save it. And now if I return to my blog post and I would re refresh this one, you will see that the Henny Penny font is not red anymore. Oh, maybe it's cached. I'll try it again. There we go. Okay, so the correct way of doing this is to go to the Google Fonts website and I can search for Henny Penny, the font that I'm using. And from here, you'll click the link, select this style. And that will expand a sidebar. And from here, you can actually embed a code to include it on your website. So I will copy this little snippet and I will choose the link one and not import because the link one would probably be better for your page speed. And as you can see here, it says to embed a font, copy the code into the head of your HTML. So that's what we are going to do. So I'm back at in my uh, WordPress website. I'll close the theme builder. I will go to the theme options in Divi. And from here, I will go to the integration tab and add code to the head of your blog. And blog would also mean the head of the entire website. So I'll just paste this snippet from Google and I'll save the changes. Now, if I refresh this post, the Henny Penny font should be read and displayed as a drop cap. And there we go, it worked.
Last but not least, I will show you how to download a pre-made template with the global drop cap. So in the blog post, you can just enter your email address to subscribe to the Divimundo newsletter. There are some nice tutorials and free stuff included in there. So click download. And there we have the link to a zip file. And if I expand it, I will find a text file, how to import with a step-by-step -step instruction and the actual layout in a JSON file. So if I head back to my WordPress dashboard, I'll go to Divi and the theme builder. And now if you already have a custom body for your posts, you can just click the pen. And now you can drag the JSON file into the content area and just drop it. You want to replace the existing content and uh, you would probably like to download a backup before importing. So you can import your old layout again if you would like to go back to that one. I'll click import to the DV Builder. So first my backup is downloaded and now the new layout is imported. So I'll just have to click save and I'll close. So if you don't have this template for your posts, I'll just remove it. You can create it by clicking add new template and then you choose to display it on all your posts. You could also display it on your products if you have WooCommerce installed or all your custom post types or whatever, or just some specific categories in your blog, etc. But I'll go for all posts in this example. I'll like create the template. Here we go. And it will inherit the global header and footer by default. So now I want to add the custom body. So I'll choose build custom body. And now it's empty, just an empty section there. So I will drag and drop the JSON file again. And I want to replace the existing content, which is the empty section. And uh, since there's nothing here, I don't need to download a backup before importing. So I click import to the DB builder. And that was quick. And now the template is imported. And just a heads up, you cannot see the drop cap here in the theme builder. I'm not sure why that's the case, but if you save it, save it changes. And let's have a look at the post. Take this one and let's review it in front end. You can see that the drop cap is there in front end. So you, your visitors will see it. And I guess that's the most important thing. Okay, that was all for today. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos coming your way. Thanks for watching. Thank you.